everyone. This is Jackie Cooper with the uh, Crypto Mom 2 talk show, as well as the GBA talk show. And I would like to welcome everyone to this episode and ask that you like and subscribe on um, both of the platforms because there are many um, interesting conversations that are about to happen. I don't want you to miss out on any of the developments that are happening within our blockchain community. So for those that are new to either of the talk shows, I would like to introduce myself and then I'll share a little bit more about the GBA. So I am, my name is Jackie Cooper and I'm an attorney and I have been doing non-traditional law for a number of years. And what I mean by non-traditional law is that I am more in the education space within the legal area, but, and I also do consulting. With that, one of the passion projects that I have is the Blockchain Legal Institute, because I believe that the blockchain space is evolving so fast that it, there's a need to know what's going on around the world with policy, laws, legislation, and um, anything that might impact you as an individual or as a business, um, from compliance to a whole slew of other areas. Laws impact all of us. So definitely take a look at the Blockchain Legal Institute for information. But the GBA is a wonderful organization that I also must ask that you, if you have not heard about the GBA, go to gbaglobal.org and um, check it out because we are having events in September. We have an, an event about artificial intelligence and it's an organization to both network and to learn and to also um, find out more about the resources and the individuals who are making things happen. And with that, I would like to kind of navigate over to my guest today because the organization um, that I'm going to be um, talking about today, Solve Care, actually is in the healthcare area. And you know, it's very creative in terms of um, using blockchain within the healthcare space. And a lot of these use cases that you might not think would apply, most definitely do. And SolveCare is a, a leader in this area. So this is the second conversation that I'm having because they have a lot of different updates and they're doing a remarkable work around the world. So with that, I would like to uh, welcome my guest, Michael Norton. How are you doing today? Hey, Jackie. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. So um, I really am grateful that you're here. I do invite everyone who has not had a chance to listen to our the first interview to go back over to Self-Care to, to listen to that. Uh, but can you go ahead and introduce yourself and... Um, how did you get started with SolveCare and how did you actually navigate into this blockchain space? Because I know my path has not been straight and narrow, so I'm sure that how you came to SolveCare might be kind of unique as well. It definitely is. So I have a background in education. I was a mathematics teacher for most of my career, and I used to own tutoring companies and work for schools. And yeah, and from that in about 2016, I got into the kind of found out about blockchain and cryptocurrencies and got interested from there. And I was a big part of different communities and one of them was SolveCare. And so in February of 2018, I started working for SolveCare and I've taken promotions from them now. And now I'm part of the communication marketing department. My uh, I'm a global community manager, which means I handle all the different uh, media that go out. I handle the uh, English and regional communities. And yeah, so it's been a, it's kind of interesting how I got here. It was just, you know, started as a side job as, you know, teachers don't get paid too much <laughs> and evolved into a full-time uh, career working in blockchain. That's phenomenal. So for those that might not have um, missed the last episode with your company, can you explain what SolveCare is and why it's important? So SolveCare is a global blockchain healthcare platform. Uh, what we do is we create a space where everyone can build their own unique uh, networks. Uh, they can build their own customized networks. So this can be anything from you know hospitals or a private clinic all the way to government associations and they can build their own unique networks on our platform. But what makes us special is that we all connect everything. We use the blockchain as an immutable ledger, 
and that stores all the different events that happen in healthcare. And because we allow the patient to control their data, they can then share that data with any uh, organization they want to. It creates a lot clearer of a picture for healthcare journeys, and it reduces a lot of waste, a lot of fraud. And because of the immutable ledger, it allows for a delegated trust, which means we can automate a lot of systems, which reduces a lot of time that doctors spend doing uh, paperwork, uh, it reduces administration costs, which is one of the main reasons that healthcare is so expensive today. And yeah, we have all sorts of anything care related can be built on our platform. It, it really truly is limitless on what we can build. And we have some good partners and you know medical devices and different networks that are running today. So um, I'm going to ask you another follow-up question in a second, but many of the listeners who are on the GBA side, maybe not so much, but the Crypto Mom 2 side, they might not understand what a mutable ledger is. Can you explain that before we go on to our next question? Sure. Yeah, I am a bit techy, so I No, oh, it's important to use the correct <laughs> terms, but I always try to think about, you know, who might be new to this and who might be curious about it. So that way they can understand the um, tremendous value that software is, is sharing because of using the technology. Of course, a true educator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so an immutable ledger. Immutable ledger is a ledger is a... Um, it means it cannot change. So anything that gets added to this chain of information cannot be then later changed. So this is important because it allows, you know, no manipulation of data to go on and both parties have to agree on the data before it is put onto the chain. Uh, but immutable means that it cannot be changed. Which is very important um, because again, it, it records that point in time and for me, you know, that is amazing that we can actually have such a creative timeline. Um, so Softcare has been making a lot of progress with their platform and recently announced the ability to handle population health management. That's a really big phrase here. Uh, can you explain a little bit more about this and, um, you know, what that means? Yeah, so... My family is full of uh, healthcare workers, but even I didn't know the term population health management when it first came around. But the idea of population health management is being able to handle large amounts of people. It pretty much speaks for itself. But the, the important thing here is being able to handle things like eligibility and enrollment, uh, data analytics, and making sure everything is interoperable, everything can work together. So the population health management was part of our release eight, which is the eighth version of our platform. And that allows us to handle very large populations when it comes to you know, signing up for Medicare, Medicaid, or CHIP programs in the US, or handling signups and enrollments for NHS. Um, also handles like the FDA and things like that. But what, what's unique about us is that you don't have to share your data in order to be a part of this. What's unique with us is that you just put your data inside your wallet. It's very private and it allows markers to be added to your wallet. And these markers can then automatically enroll you or prove you're eligible for different programs. So without having to go, for example, if you were to go to a hospital and you needed urgent care, you wouldn't have the time to sit down and fill out the 10 pages of paperwork if it was a new hospital for you. But our platform, what it would do is it would tell you that you're enrolled in this, or it would automatically enroll you into the hospital, which means that it would share your previous health data, it would share your allergies, it would share, you know, your insurance information with this hospital, and you wouldn't have to go through this long enrollment process. But this can be expanded to so many people and just millions of people around the world can be easily enrolled into different programs. Uh, they can figure out programs they didn't know they were able to enroll in. And it just, it changes things from a push perspective where you have to go out and figure out everything on your own to a pull perspective where you can now um, be enrolled or told you're eligible for different programs without having to go out and find them yourself. So you said something that really kind of st stuck with me. You, you mentioned a wallet. So a lot of people might think of wallets like financial wallets. 
So when you were talking and you were talking about the information, it occurred to me that for, and correct me if I'm wrong, but for a lot of people, they're familiar with Google and they're familiar with folders and things like that. So in this case, a wallet is very similar to a folder, which holds the information. It's not necessarily a wallet, which uh, contains some sort of currency. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, well, we do handle uh, our cryptocurrency solve in there. It's, I like to think of the wallets. We have on inside of our wallet cards. So if you think of these as cards or business cards inside of a wallet, that's pretty much what it is. You have your wallet, which handles you know your currency, but then you also have these business cards, which connect you to different aspects. You know They can connect you to a lawyer or they can connect you to a plumber. So in our wallet, is, which is an application, it's just like a normal application you would use, there are cards in there that can connect you with your primary care physician or a telehealth doctor or to medical devices. So in that sense, you can kind of think of it as a wallet, but it is an application that just connects you to everything. Okay, great. Um, I know that um, you know interop interoperability is a big word uh, in both the healthcare and blockchain. Um, how, how What's the approach within self-care for that? And uh, can you explain a little bit better um, how this can lead to better healthcare options? Yes, sorry. I believe I'm having a little bit of internet issues. That's okay. We we are uh, for those that are listening or watching the video. Uh, we are located in different parts of the world. I think you said you're in Prague right now. So yes. you know, and I'm in the United States. So uh, it's to be expected that sometimes there will be um, different things happening with the internet. So uh, keep you know, no no worries. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so interoperability. Um, in the blockchain space, it refers to uh, different blockchains. Each blockchain is its own chain and it doesn't communicate with any other blockchain. So if you're thinking of Cardano or Ethereum or Bitcoin, they don't connect to each other. So interoperability in the blockchain space is about making it each of these chains communicate with each other. But in the healthcare space, interoperability is a much bigger thing. We have data silos that hold information. And for the longest time, it was for security. You know, healthcare companies wanted to make sure that their data was as secure as possible. Um, but as time goes on and things are more spread out and we're in this digital phase, uh, it's become a burden. And I like to give this example. I was in San Diego and I was going to Kaiser and I went to the normal Kaiser hospital. I went there for normal appointments. That was my primary care physician. But one day I had a, a real bad stomach illness and I needed to go to the urgent care. The urgent care is right next door. You, It's a couple feet away from it. But I went into the urgent care and they asked me to fill out this huge thing of paperwork before I could be seen. And I said, well, you have my data. It's in the hospital right next door. And they told me because of their systems, the way it's set up, they can't get that data from the hospital. I had to physically walk over to the hospital next door, get my data from them and walk back over with paper and give it to them so that they had all my data. And that's just, that's crazy in this day and age. The, the amount of, you know, fax machines are still a huge, huge technology for healthcare. And most of us haven't seen a fax machine in a decade or more. So what we do is we bridge that by allowing the patient to control their own data can then share that data. So if I had gone to the hospital, all the data from the hospital would be stored inside my wallet. And when I went over to the urgent care, I could just then share that data with them. It's a lot easier and a lot more. It brings everything together. But some of the big things is, you know, if I, I'm traveling right now, if I was to go to a hospital here in Prague, that data could be stored inside my wallet. And then when I go home to my primary care physician, I can share that data with them and say, oh, you know, they put me on this medication and they gave me this treatment and I and they had this prognosis and all that can be shared together. And it creates a much more powerful set of data for, you know, your healthcare providers to give you the best care possible. So um, a few things. I still have a fax machine, but I don't use it. <laughs> it's like a relic, like you said. <laughs> 
And then for those that <laughs> feel a little confused about interoperability, even though I think you did an excellent job, you know, think of it like roadways. You sometimes need a bridge across roadways, you know. So I think, you know, like you said, um, it's it's really important to, uh, to be able to navigate, you know, the healthcare systems, no matter what country and where you are, even within our own country. So um, you recently partnered um, with a doctor and um, uh, and so now you're partnered with, I might pronounce it right, uh, wrong, uh, DHRA. Um, so can you explain more about uh, what the partnership is and um, why you decided to connect? Yeah, so uh, we call it DIRA, but it's the Decentralized Health Record Access. Ah. Um, so the Decentralized Health Record Access is all about finding your information. So as I was just saying about traveling and going to different hospitals, I have been in some countries where I've gotten, you know, stomach flu and had to go to a hospital. Uh, but if you were to ask me what hospital it was, I, I wouldn't remember, you know, and that's the problem is that throughout our lives, we, we're in contact with so many different points of care, you know, from different places. And what the decentralized health record access is all about is finding that information. It's all about the record access, finding the different you know, points of care and then bringing them all together so you have this clear picture of, of what you've done. And so we're working with uh, Dr. Yuri Ostrovsky. Uh, he was uh, studied engineering at MIT and then went on to neuroscience at uh, Yale, I believe. Yeah, I believe it was Yale. Uh, but he is all about health records. He has a long uh, history in you know, trying to digitize a lot of things in healthcare. So it fit our platform perfectly and it went along perfectly with, you know, some of the things we're doing as well. Yeah, no, it's fascinating. I mean, uh, my my initial start in law was in the healthcare area. Um, I was all about patients' rights and um, uh, bioethics and a whole slew of other topics. And so this is... Uh, something that I'm familiar with um, because like I said, my journey has not been straight and narrow. I've kind of touched on a lot of different things. So I know that um, just the other week you announced the launch of something very special called Zero Knowledge Clinical Trials, um, the network. Can you explain a little bit more what Zero Knowledge is and how this um, can benefit the community? Yeah, so clinical trials is is foundational to you know improving healthcare around the world. It's it's how we test things out and how things are developed and you know medicines and and cancer treatments and you know everything requires trials before it goes to the the mass population. So the the clinical trials network that we've launched is special because of zero knowledge. So what zero knowledge means is that they do not need your information. You don't have to go around and give everyone your full complete medical details. You don't have to give them your name and your, you know, your, your date of birth and all these different uh, points. Um, so I like to use another reference is when COVID came out, I was, uh, I have an at-risk mom and I had a pregnant sister. So I wanted to get my vaccine as soon as possible. So I volunteered at a hospital to help out and I would receive my vaccination. Well, in order to get that vaccination, I had to give them all of my data. I had to fill out the whole packet and everything like that. Well, I never went to that hospital again after that. You know, I volunteered at different places, but I never went back to that hospital and didn't have an appointment there or anything. A few, a few months later, I got a message saying that that hospital had been hacked and all their data had been released. And I don't know to this day whether it's my healthcare data was a part of that, but it felt really silly to me that I had to go and give everything about my life to that hospital before I went to and get one vaccination that you know the whole country was getting. So what zero knowledge does is it allows me to enroll into something without giving that data. You know, all if the hospital wanted some information from me, you know, they wanted to verify my identity. All they would have to do is look at my wallet. My wallet would say, yes, he is who he says he is. Yes, he is a citizen. Yes, he has the ability to go to this hospital. And yes, he has insurance. But it wouldn't give all of my information away. It would just verify everything they need to give me that, that procedure. So what, 
we're doing with zero knowledge in clinical trials is you can say, I am between this age and this age. I, you know, I am this ethnicity. I am this, I have these uh, medical um, history and you can use that to enroll into clinical trials. So if a clinical trial is looking for something that matches you, they wouldn't see all of, all of your data points. They would just know you fit this criteria and they can reach out to you and say, hey, are you interested in filling out this survey? Or, hey, if we had a physician that is local to you, would you be willing to go see them for an appointment and talk to them about your, you know, chronic illness or, you know, your medical history? And so this is big because it allows a lot more people to get involved in clinical trials without having to go to each of these clinical trials, give them all your information, and it just makes it easier for everyone to access them. So this is very powerful because we feel like we can expand on clinical trials and, you know, the clinical trial providers get a much more focused, you know, participants. And because we are interoperable, you know, one of the biggest reasons people uh, drop off of clinical trials is because they get care somewhere else. If you get care at a diff different place aside from the clinical trial, they have to disqualify you. But with our platform, because everything comes together, we can then share that data and it's more trusted data and they don't have to disqualify you for something like that. So our clinical trials network is very powerful because it can bring a lot more clinical trials to a lot more people without them having to risk all their data or go through a lengthy enrollment process. I think this is really critically important on so many levels because we've talked about um, and heard about identity theft and you know other issues of sharing personal data. I mean, I recently saw a post that um, actually my daughter shared with me about Zoom and how now a lot of the recordings and information on Zoom, they... Um, are saying that they control and will be able to use for AI purposes. I do not, I, I record on Zoom, but I don't record on the Zoom platform. I record on my computer. But the idea that we don't always, we don't, one, we don't always read our terms and conditions. Two, we don't always have the ability to opt out of certain things. So the idea that we can selectively decide what of our personal identity and information we want to choose to share with someone. I think, you know, over the past maybe 10 years, I don't know, maybe that's too short a time period, we've really eroded our privacy and our ability for our own personal identity because we've been so crazed in a not a negative way, but we've been involved with the online world and we just think okay yes 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 let me put my phone number let me put my email so on the in the healthcare side which is really important and we don't always realize it until we're sick and we have the need um especially like you said if you're by yourself going into a facility and you're not well and you have to share this information that takes a huge amount of time and if you don't remember all the details that's a whole nother barrier that, or if you're traveling and you don't have the documents, that's another barrier. So I think that this ability to be automated like this and have the zero knowledge, I think it's a, it's definitely um, solving a problem that's needed. So um, real world yeah. adoption um, has always been a goal for self care. Um, how's that going? And what can we expect in the, in terms of this next year? And, um, what, I know that, you know, there's a, a rolling out plan and how, how's it going? What can we see? Yeah. So we've been really picking up in our development terms, you know, and we our platform is finally to the point where it is enterprise ready, you know, a few releases ago. Uh, Pradeep said that, you know, we have something that people can use, but if you were to approach me at my former job, I, you know, wouldn't look at this as a viable option. But with what we've done now is we've really pushed our platform forward and we are to the point where we can, you know, enroll a lot of people, you know, millions of patients can now use our platform without, you know, any worries, issues, and it's very smooth and reliable uh, application and platform now. So we have a lot of partners that we're currently signing up. 
Uh, there's not one specific place either. We have uh, partners in the US, Canada, uh, uh, Dubai. We have some in Korea, Japan, South, South America. We have, yeah, Africa as well. We have a lot coming for our platform and we're working with, you know, small individual applications that would just be great to add to our, our, our platform. And we have some that are, you know, full governments that are looking to utilize our eligibility and enrollment. So as far as mass adoption, it's a very exciting time to be, you know, involved with solve care because, you know, we went from spending a month setting up for an announcement for, you know, a new partnership to, hey, we need to get this out in a couple of days. <laughs> we have a oh, lot coming no, for I us. And we... Totally, yeah. Yeah, that is great. Yeah. So um, again, everyone who is is listening, um, all the contact information will be embedded below in the blog below. Um, but again, I'll ask you, how can people listening get involved with self-care? Yeah, so our social medias are a good place to, to find us and follow along. <laughs> If you are more of a you know crypto person, we do have a very active and fun Telegram. We also have a Discord, but you can find us on pretty much any social media. Uh, we always do events where I'm speaking like this, and we do a lot with the community. So uh, every week I host a show where you know anyone, if you're new to Solve Care or you've been following Solve Care for a while, you can come ask any question, and I spend about an hour, hour and a half just answering questions from people, you know, giving uh, more information on us because we we are very complex. You know, we take a very complex problem and make a very simple solution, but it is a lot of layers and it is kind of difficult to understand at first, but we're always there. We have a great community to come ask questions and get to know us. I agree. Um, you know, again, whether it's the healthcare side, you know, with self-care or the legal side with the Blockchain Legal Institute, you know, again, blockchain is solving problems, um, even though Blockchain Legal Institute is not on the blockchain. But <laughs> but you know, for, for those that are interested in learning more, definitely um, check out solve.care. And um, like, as I mentioned, for, for those who are on the audio side, uh, all the links will be embedded below. Um, and I, I really appreciate, Michael, your being on. I know that we are going to have other conversations as things evolve and current events. And I know that, you know, just from a, a weather perspective, what you're creating or have created is important for when, um, you know, documents are destroyed, you know, so that way they will continue to list, uh, live and exist on um, a platform that can provide a solution because again, um, you know, hurricanes happen, floods happen, you know, it's, we've seen this, you know, the climate's changing. And so we need to be creative in terms of our document collection as well. Definitely. Yes. It's been a pleasure being here, Jackie. I know we'll be speaking again very soon. Yes, for sure. So as I always say at the end of all my shows, Remember, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. We're all so interconnected. We're all part of one world and more today than ever else. So again, thank you so much for being on. Definitely remind, I want to remind everyone, like and subscribe to the various talk shows so you can learn more of the next wonderful guests that will be on and have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.